All right, let's go ahead and check out our final results. And there you have it, very nice looking. Look at that, broken down per service, all the possible vulnerabilities that were found as a result of that scan. Hi everyone, and welcome back to another Nielsen Networking video. In the video ahead, I am going to show you some advanced Nmap techniques, specifically using Nmap alongside a script to take Nmap to the next level. Now that said, I will be showing you how to use Nmap scripts that are designed specifically for pen testing, vulnerability scans, network assessments, so on and so forth. These scripts should help all you, especially pen testers, ethical hackers, system admins, and other security experts to locate vulnerabilities so that they can be further tested, documented, and eventually remediated. All right, before we get to our first scans, let's go over the lab that we will be using for this video. This is a lab that I have built from the ground up on my own hardware and my software, meaning I own it and I do have permission to do everything we're going to be doing in this video. That said, the VirtualBox infrastructure I have contains a Kali Linux machine that will be running all the um, scans from. We also have Windows XP box, Windows 10, Windows 7, uh, Ubuntu with WordPress loaded on it, and we have a Metasploitable test server, which if you don't know what that is, stay tuned, I'll kind of explain it and explain how you can get your own uh, later on in the video. That said, let's get to our first scan. All right, and one more thing before we begin. If you have never used Nmap or you don't have, you know, some fundamental understanding of how Nmap works, please do yourself a favor and go back and check out video one of this series and then come back here. Otherwise, you're, it's kind of like learning how to multiply and divide before, before learning how to add and subtract. You're going you're gonna to see these cool things and be like, oh, that's great. And maybe you can go and copy the commands, but you're really not going to understand what you're doing. So do yourself a favor. Do it the right way. Go check out video one if you haven't seen it. So that said, let's get to the first script for real this time. All right, the first script we are going to cover, and actually the next three to four scripts are all going to be HTTP related scripts, meaning web server targets. Uh, and we're going to start off with the cross site request forgery vulnerability detection script. Now to do this, you would run the following command. And just so we're clear, Nmap is obviously the program. <laughs> this is the first switch telling it you want to know the version. This is telling it we're going to use a script. This is the script number. And this is the IP I'm gonna run it against. I'm actually gonna run this about against multiple IPs, but this will be the first one. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter and let it start doing its thing. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and open up another window here so we can run uh, multiple scans at a time so we can compare the results we get. So this one, we're gonna run against 2.7 and one more um, so we can get three different results here. Okay, I'll come back to you when these are done. All right, all the scans finished. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's check out the uh, one on the left here first. This is going to whoops, be the Metasploitable server. Scrolling down, we can see there's typical behavior from Nmap, you know, the um, port, the service, the version, all that good stuff. And then further down, we get to what we are looking for. First of all, it tells you um, the header for the uh, Apache web server. And then going a little further down, here's what you really want to pay attention to. Found the following possible cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities. Now this is where you would want to, if you're you know, doing a pen test, um, vulnerability scan, you're gonna then need to take this a step further and you would need to uh, zero in on this file or this file or what's this PHP script? Doing? You know, you would need to then take it a step further. So that these are kind of call outs. They're not exactly telling you 100% what the vulnerability is, but they're saying, hey, take a closer look. So it's step one. Um, in that scan. And then scrolling down, you can continue to see other um, services, ports and things that are open. And it looks like that is about it for the first one. So let's go ahead and check out the second machine. Scrolling up, this is gonna be our Windows 7 machine. And it looks like it couldn't find any, couldn't find any. So it looks like it's struck out here. So we're one and one. Let's go ahead and check out the last one. And this is going to be, oh, this is actually Nmaps. They have a website, you should write this down. This is a free um, domain that you can run Nmap scans against for testing purposes. So this is a pretty cool resource to um, have. And I'll go ahead and throw this in the um, description as well. And it looks like this one is actually throwing up some possibilities too. So let's take a look here. 
showing it has SSH open. I believe they did that on purpose. Uh, and then to get down to the um, header again, I think it's a different version of Apache, but the same um, header. We're looking at here, possible vulnerabilities, and then it's telling you again where to look. So we got two out of the three. So we're uh, what, 66%? Uh, pretty good. So that's the first script. That again, you would then take these and you would need to further investigate your findings um, at this point. So let's go ahead and move on to the next script. All right, the next script is the HTTP Apache server status script. What this script does is it looks for misconfigured Apache web servers. And when it finds one, the script then runs itself against the server. The server will then return information that is then parsed by the script and then returned to you. And this information can be, you know, the system uptime, the version of Apache it's running, um, recent HTTP requests, and so on and so forth. So you could then take that information and once again, do further research and see if there's any known vulnerabilities, for instance, against the version of Apache it's running, things like that. So let's go ahead and test it out, shall we? Okay, first thing, we're gonna run it against um, my Metasploitable server, which is running Apache. And unfortunately, that gives us no results there. I guess that's fortunate, but for the demo, it's unfortunate I don't get to show you. But let's go ahead and check out our um, Apache web server that's running WordPress. And that doesn't look like it has it either. So let's try it against the uh, Nmap site again, which was scan me. And it doesn't look like it has the um, misconfiguration either. So good job to them. Good job to me, I guess, for uh, having our, our Apache server configured correctly. So that said, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next script. Okay, the next script is known as the HTTP method script. Now what this script does is it goes out and finds what options are available from certain web servers. So what it does is it sends an options request to a web server and says what methods are available, what are the options, and then that web server will respond. And normally you would expect to get a get, a head, a post, and then the options method, but occasionally you'll get a different response, uh, and those can often be risky. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what we get. And we're going to first run it against, uh, I didn't mean to do that. We're going to first run it against our um, Apache web server that is running WordPress. Okay, and see, these are the standard methods you would expect to get when you run the script. So that's good. That server, it makes sense. That's good. I just built that server yesterday. It should be configured correctly. So let's go out and run this against the Metasploitable server. And look at that. That server is showing that it's configured as well. Now let's go ahead and run it against our IIS server. Okay, so here, this is returning the standard options that we'd expect, but it's also returning the trace method. Now what the trace method is and why this is considered risky is because it can occasionally lead to the disclosure of sensitive information, such as you know, uh, an internal authentication header appended by reverse proxies or other information that you could then again take and use um, to take things a step further. So that's why that is risky. Uh, and those are things you would be looking for when using that script. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one. All right, the uh, next script is the HTTP error script. And what this script does is it crawls through the website and looks for any uh, error pages it finds. And then you would be able to take that error um, code from that error page and do some further investigation. At least that's what the point of the script is. So let's go ahead and check it out real quick. It's pretty straightforward to run. We're gonna run it against uh, Nmap again. And here you go. And it did return that it found one page that has a uh, error code 404. So then you would go out and do some further research and see if that's anything that you could use, you know, in a penetration or a vulnerability scan. So on to the next one. All right, the uh, next script I want to show you is the HTTP grep script. Now what this script does is it goes out and spiders or crawls a website and attempts to find on the various pages of that website information. And by default, it's going to look for IP addresses and email addresses, but it can also look for first name. Uh, it can look for a, a, a bunch more. You could just go out to nmap.org and search for the name of the script and it will pull up the um, entire uh, details on that. But for this video, we're going to search for just the IP and email. And we're going to search against our Metasploitable server. So let's go ahead and check it out. And here we go. And as you can see, it has already um, replied with the email address, another email address. Looks like an IP. It doesn't really tell you what it's for, but it did that. Uh, and then some other information. So let's try this against a different server and see what we get. Let's run this against Windows 7, which is running IS. Nothing there. And what about our WordPress server? 
and nothing there. So uh, that's what that script does. It can be very useful if you're trying to just, you know, do some reconnaissance um, uh, about the company. So there you go. Next script. All right, and the next one is a specific to WordPress. It is HTTP WordPress Enum, and it is a scan that goes out and looks for plugins that are running on the site. And when it finds them, it returns them. There are numerous um, WordPress plugins that are uh, vulnerable. So this is actually pretty useful, especially if the uh, client you're running your pen test for happens to uh, be using a, a WordPress website. So let's check it out. Let's run it against my WordPress that I just installed yesterday and see what we get. Okay. And this must be a default plugin because I did not install this. Uh, but as you can see, it returned the plugin that must be the default. And at this point, I could then take that and go out and research if there were any uh, vulnerabilities for that. So that's the WordPress one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, and the next script we're going to go over is known as DNS Brute. So we're shifting away from HTTP over to DNS for one um, script, and then we're going to move on to SMB after this script. But first, DNS Brute, what it is, is it's a script that looks for subdomains of a parent domain. So NielsenNetworking.com, it's going to go out and look for subdomains of that domain. The reason it does this is because a lot of subdomains point to different actual servers. So then those servers can expand the scope of the initial pen test or vulnerability scan. And now those need to be included in, you know, from A to Z, everything you do with every other server you had on your list or that you found during your um, network discovery. So that said, let's give it a shot and see what we can find. And we're gonna go ahead and utilize the um, scammy.mmap.org again, because I don't have any internal servers that have subdomains. So we're gonna go ahead and run this and see what we get. Okay, and we can see here, this is the actual IP that we were running on that matches this. So this is the same server. So that didn't return anything uh, that's useful, but look at this. This is an A record pointing to a different server. So now we could add this to the list of um, servers or devices. We don't know what this is necessarily that we have to go out and uh, perform, you know, the same scans we do on all the other devices during the tests. So that's that. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and move on over to um, some SMB scanning. All right, the first script we're going to use for SMB scanning to look for uh, vulnerabilities is going to be known as SMB protocols. And you guessed it, it's a simple ser or a simple script that's going to go out and ask the servers, what SMB protocols do you support? The servers will then respond with which ones they uh, support. And we can take a look and look for ones that we know are uh, not good to have supported. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to run this using an IP list that I've created ahead of time. Again, if you don't know how to do this or you don't know why we're doing this, go back and check out that first video because we go over it there in that video. We'll let this run and then we'll review it. Okay, and it looks like it finished. It was actually quicker than I thought. All right, so first one we have is Windows 7 and it looks like it is supporting SMB version one. And look right here, the script even tells you this is dangerous by default. And it looks like it supports 2.2 and 2.1. And then we're going to go down here. And it looks like this is going to be the Windows XP box. And once again, it's supporting SMB1, dangerous by default. And that seems to be the theme because even our uh, Metasploitable server is showing up as supporting SMB version 1. And last but not least, couldn't be left out, is our Windows 10 machine supporting SMB. And this one's actually supporting um, not just one, two, two dot one. So this thing apparently supports every kind of SMB you can think of. So like when you're looking at something like this, when you're writing on a report, you would need to ask, do you really need to have all these versions of SMB supported? Maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's a legacy server that they need all these versions. You don't know. But you do know that this one is a big no-no and easily exploitable. Um, so are these for that matter. But um, more on that in another video. But moving down here, our last machine, which is our... Uh, Ubuntu server running our Apache is not running SMB. So good job for Linux once again. Uh, so that is that script. Now we're going to move on to another SMB script. Okay. And the next SMB and the last SMB uh, script we're going to go over is known as SMB security mode. And this script checks various information about um, the SMB protocol, authentication methods with security level, things like that. But the most important parameter it's looking for is message signing. And it shows if it's, um, 
enabled or not. And whenever you see a um, response that it is not required, it should immediately be reported as a vulnerability because that is known as a big misconfiguration that tons of exploits out in the wild on this specific thing. If you do not have message signing enabled and required, that's a big red flag. So let's go ahead and check it out and see how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and run it again. And I should have mentioned SMB runs on 445, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you put that in um, when you're running the scan. We're gonna go ahead and run it and we'll let it come back. Oh, and that was really quick. So let's go up and check. Okay, 2.7 and Windows 7. And as you can see here, it is showing message signing disabled. Now this is the default. This is the default as they actually ship to this day, Windows comes. Um, maybe Windows 11's changed, but as far as Windows 10, it always came this way. Uh, SMB signing was not required. So look at it again, disabled, disabled. So that would be, so it's it's disabled on all of the machines that are running SMB. And of course, Kali or uh, Ubuntu is not running SMB and there you go. So there would be four vulnerable servers that you could likely exploit easily using vulnerabilities you could find out on the internet. So that's pretty scary stuff. And these would be big red flags that would need to be on that report as, hey, get these machines offline right away or get them um, reconfigured the correct way. So next we're gonna move on to SSL ciphers. All right, and the uh, first SSL script we're gonna run is known as SSL enum ciphers. I'm sure that's short for enumerate. And what this script does is it repeatedly tries to initiate SSL and TLS connections with a host. And each time it tries a new cipher or compressor uh, while recording whether the host um, accepts it or not. And then it puts, it compiles a list of all the um, ciphers that were allowed and then gives you a, a grade of what it considers the strength of that cipher and it gives you a grade of uh, I believe an A through F just like a report card. So we're going to go ahead and run this on our Windows 7 box because this is the only machine in the lab at the moment that I have an SSL certificate enabled on. So let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. And that was blazing quick and I've seen a lot of F's and I don't like that. So let's go ahead and review the results here. So for the first thing, it's running SSL 3.0, which is a problem. And it's telling me I'm getting an F right here for all the different uh, certificate versions or ciphers, I should say. And then let's scroll down here. It tells you right here that this is vulnerable to a Suite 32 attack. It's a big red flag. There's a lot of exploits available for that. And then scroll down, it says, oh yeah, I'm running TLS 1.0 on top of SSL 3.0. So not much better, right? Oh, look at that, straight Fs. No one would be proud of that report card. And then once again, obviously, that's going to be vulnerable to Suite 32. So uh, there you go. This is a script that I would almost suggest everyone runs. Even just if you're not even going through a vulnerability scan or a pen test, or you're, you know, you're just a network admin, and this is just due diligence. Do this every now and then. Set, set a cron job for this to run every now and then uh, just to check it out, keep you out of hot water. So on to the next SSL script. All right, the next and final um, SSL script is known as the SSL cert, not the, just SSL cert. Uh, and what this script does is it goes out and retrieves uh, SSL certificates from servers, and it will return various information along with an actual um, copy of the um, certificate. So let's go ahead and take a look. And you can run with the, you can run this with the dash V at the end or not. Uh, if you don't, you won't get as much uh, verbosity returned. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on because I like to get the maximum you can get. Go ahead and run it. And you can see there's the actual uh, encrypted certificate. And as we scroll up, you can see the validity period, algorithm, and you can see the common name, the issuer. So a lot of a lot of good information here. Uh, not just for a pen test or a um, vulnerability scan, just being a server admin. So you have 100 servers and you want to put in like a warning that if your certificate's about it to expire, you know, you, you get a warning and you could just set this up as a cron job, have it run, have Python or Perl or something you know, uh, parse out the information of when it expires and send an, send an email to you. So lots of uses for this script, not just necessarily in um, pen testing or vulnerability scanning. All right, that said, let's move on. All right, and for our second to last script, we're gonna go over one that isn't really a script at all. And the reason I say that is because how Nmap categorizes scripts, it will use a term. So the one we're gonna do is vuln short for vulnerability, but there's also one that's named version when you're trying to get the versions of things, or there's one for um, discovery when you're just trying to discover it. So you kind of get that. So what Voln is gonna do is it's gonna go out and scan all the scripts that are relevant in that 
uh, category. So we're going to go ahead and run it against our Metasploitable server. So we should get some results. So let's go ahead and let this run. It may take a second, but let's let it go. Okay, so the script finished running. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it decided to run against this machine. Uh, and remember, it will try to run what it finds when it does a port scan. Whatever services are running, it will then go out and pick the scripts it thinks are best to run against it. So it started with the uh, cross-site request forgery script that we actually started the video with um, because we knew there was um, some issues there, and it did as well. So it went ahead and said that there's some possible uh, vulnerabilities there. And then it ran a SQL injection query script, which makes sense because this Metasploitable server is uh, listed as having issues with MySQL. So that's interesting that it figured that out on its own and it gave it all, the, all these possibilities um, for SQL injection queries. And then it looks like it didn't find anything on cross-site scripting, so that's good. Uh, but it did find a vulnerability, which I guess is known as the slow loris vulnerability. Never heard of that. Uh, I'd have to go out and check it out. And the cool thing is with this script, if you wanted to go check it out, you could just right click on this and go to open link and it would open a browser and you could go look at it. Uh, and then it looks like it tried to run that script. Nothing here, uh, nothing here. Apparently it does allow for um, trace. Remember that was that method we could check and see um, if it pulled down the trace method. I didn't think it did, but maybe if you run a trace directly against it, even though it's not advertising the method, maybe it does give you some useful information. And then the, um, the last one that looks good is the uh, HTTP enumeration. And it looks like it found a few things it thought were it, it thought was interesting, like a ticky wiki <laughs> test page, uh, possible information file, PHP my admin. See, it's looking for anything. It's it's almost like a mini version of AI in a way. Anything that it thinks might be helpful, like this one, a potentially interesting directory with a listing on Apache. So on the web server, uh, I don't know why I thought the icons were interesting, but whatever. Uh, and so that's kind of what this script does. Uh, so that's that and for the next script we're going to get into it and we're actually going to use the next script we're going to do to build a lightweight vulnerability scanner. So let's go do that now. All right, final script of the video. I saved the best for last and I really mean that. We're going to be going over a script known as Volners. And we're going to be actually be taking Volners and the results from Volners because there will be many and I'll explain why in a minute. We're then going to actually be using Python to parse out relevant information, but more on that in a second. So what we're going to be doing with Volners, which is a script that does the following. It will go out, scan our machine for all open ports, then look at what services are running and then finally compare or not. Actually, I said that wrong. It's going to do ports, services, and then um, the version number. And then it's gonna take all that information and compare that with its online database, which last time I checked with Nmap uh, on their website, they said it was over 250 gigs. Um, so this enormous online database of known vulnerabilities, and they're gonna match up the version number of the service we have with the information they have, and then it's gonna report back on the screen. The problem is when it reports back, it can be overwhelming and almost too intense to read, Hence why we're going to go ahead and use Python to parse out that use, useful information. So in the long term, what we're going to end up with is a, uh, a script that gives us a ton of information that is parsed down into very uh, readable and um, usable information, kind of a mini uh, version of Nessus, if you will, and it's free. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, and the command we're going to start with, we're going to go ahead and just let it do a raw dump, and then we'll format it nicer. Um, just I just want to show you what the difference is. So let's go ahead and run it. And all right, let's go ahead and check the results. Whoa, there's a lot here. So as you can see, it is a little bit overwhelming all on the screen right there. Um, but what we can do is we could see right here. So this is going to be all SSH uh, vulnerabilities. So what you would do is you would then click on one of them. Um, well, that's one way to do it. So if you click on them, let's just see what happens. We right click, go to open link. It's going to take us out to their site. That is kind of hit or miss. Okay, this one actually looks like it gives you a pretty good description. Some of them honestly aren't that great of a description, but what you could always do if they're not giving you a great description on the Volner website, you could just go ahead and put it in Google and go ahead and look at them at multiple different websites. So you could even go straight to the NIST right here and they have full um, details on it. And they even will go into um, remediation techniques and everything else. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, the thing is, it's very overwhelming. I mean, look at all this. Okay, so then that, this is going to be for DNS. You go down here, there's a bunch more stuff. Um, and then HTTP. And as we scroll down, there's going to be more and more. Let's check out a few other services. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, format it a little nicer. So then it's continuing down. 
and you can see there's more and more and then see, it just gets a little overwhelming here with all this junk so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and we're going to tweak the command a little bit to make it a little bit easier on the eyes and um, to weed out some of the junk you don't care about Okay, and the first thing we are going to do is we are going to tell Nmap to return our results in XML. So to do that, we need to do the following. I'm going to go ahead and paste it right here. We are going to tell Nmap to you need to do the same thing with the Volner script. That's all the same. But at this point, we are now going to tell it to use the um, switch dash uh, O uppercase X. And then you will put the uh, name of the file you want to have, um, the output and then the number of the machine. So I'm gonna actually change this because I wanna do that Metasploitable server again. And then I need to make sure, I'm just gonna copy this and control out. I wanna see where I'm at. Okay, this will work. So we'll go ahead and run it here and we're gonna go ahead and run the script. All right, the script finished. Let's go ahead and make sure it's the, uh, it outputted the XML file and it did. Let's just make sure that's it and that's today okay so we're good all right and the next thing we need to do now that we have our xml file there is we need to install if you don't already have it the uh, pip package management software because we need to download um, something that i couldn't find using apt to try to install it and that is going to be the python uh, dash lib and map module so to do that we are going to run the following two commands and you can try to run the python script i'm going to show you in a second without doing this if you think you already have this installed i doubt you will because i did it uh, but the first um, command we're going to run is this and of course i already have it so it's telling me i already have it and then the second one is going to be this command right here And again, it's just going to tell me I already have it. So we're good. So you would need to run those two, and I'll throw these in the description. You need to run those two commands. And once that is done, and now we can actually go ahead and write that uh, Python script. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, to uh, create our uh, Python script, you're going to go ahead and open VI or Nano. I'm going to go ahead with Nano. So you would do, actually here, we're going to want to do sudo and Nano, and then name it whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to name mine after the uh, IP of the uh, machine. And I'll just name it Voln. Um, that way I know. And when we get in here, we're gonna wanna put in the following code. And I'm gonna cut and paste this because this is a lot. I will actually put this in the description as well. But something worth noting here, the indentation on this script are critical. Meaning if you were to add a, um, if I did that, the whole script would stop working. So you need to make sure they are aligned exactly. So the first three are all the way on the left, and then it's indented one space, then two spaces, and then three and three. So again, I will paste this exactly as it needs to be in the description, but you need to have that. The next thing you need to change is whatever your IP number for the machine you are running against is, or whatever the output file was you picked when we did the uh, Nmap scan with the O and the X. So mine was 13, so I should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a control save, and then I'm gonna get out of here. And I'm gonna clear this up. And now all that's left to do is to run the uh, Python script. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and do Python. You could do, actually we'll do Python three because that's the latest and you know we're cool like that so we're going to do the name of the uh, python script here which i guess i should have used a dot uh, py but whatever this will work and we're going to go 13.vul and i am going to redirect this into i'm just going to call this 1002.13.results and do that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go nano you could use vi whatever whatever um a text editor you like to use I'm going to go ahead and whoops three dot results i'm going to go in here and as you can see once we're in here you get the um the nice breakdown it's just more pleasant on the eye it's kind of like running h top versus um just regular top i mean not quite the same but you know what i mean um it breaks it up with some colors here to make things easier on the eye to um show the delineation between different uh, vulnerabilities, or I should say different services. Uh, it labels the exploits over here, and then the links are still right-click clickable. Uh, and then of course in the middle it has the um, CVE score, 
break down from um, the highest to the lowest. It just formats it nicer, and that's what I meant. You could still go through and read it on the screen the other way if you wanted, um, but I just don't prefer that way. I prefer to see it the, the way it is on the right screen versus how it is on the left. It just looks a lot nicer to me, uh, but to each his own. And if you like it the other way, you could look at it like this. You know, so I guess it's not horribly bad. Um, again, I just like it this way. So I'm sticking to that. So I guess uh, with that said, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It went longer than I thought, but there was just a lot of scripts and a lot of information uh, to put out there. I hope you're not overwhelmed. I know we covered a lot of individual scripts, and you're probably like, well, if we could just run Volner um, and get these results, why not just do that? And the reason is because Volner doesn't always pull up those individual. It only pulls up the uh, scripts it thinks are relevant to your machine. So by running them individually, you are first you're reducing the overhead on your machine and you'll get your results returned quicker. And secondly, you can do more targeted per um, like let's say you just want to target what's wrong with SSL certificates on your network. You can just do that. Or if you go with Volner, Volner, it's going to do. It's kind of like you get all or none. You know what I mean? So anyways, I hope you appreciated this video. Um, we're going to you know, go keep full speed ahead and try to get some more videos out in the security series with some different security tools. I just felt, thought that with Metasploit was such a big success that showing you uh, ways to find more vulnerabilities and more things would help you, you know, with your pen test and your... Um, vulnerability scans moving forward. So that said, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to hit that like button. We could use all the help we can get. Um, subscribe, ring the notifications, do whatever you want to do. Uh, comment if you have any questions or uh, just want to give me some thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. I'm, I'll take it all. So uh, that's about it. You have a great rest of your day. Talk to you later.